ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here. <clears throat> this is the 29th, Monday the 29th of January 2024. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, at the end of this year, maybe we'll get a bunch of t-shirts printed up. It says, I survived 2024. And then maybe at the end of 2025, we'll go and we, we'll want to have t-shirts printed up that says, I survived 2025. But we won't have the technical ability to be able to print t-shirts any longer. <laughs> I mean, I mean, where's this world headed? I mean, look, look at what we got going on. Just in America alone. Truckers all heading down toward the border in Texas. It's a convoy. A convoy. You yeah, remember, there used to be a, a, mo a song back, you know, uh, about that. Uh, anyway, I, it was it was quite a... It was, it was catchy. It was catchy. It was a catchy song, you know, back, back in the day. Back when I was a young fella, you know, I used to listen to stuff like that. Smokey and the Good Bandit and all that, go, you know, Breaker 1-9 and all that kind of stuff, you know, back in the day. Back in the good old days compared to now. we got so much problems happening, okay? The southern border in the United States, big news right now. But I'm going to tell you guys what. This issue about the barbed wire down the southern border, that wire part is just the tip of a much larger iceberg of irreconcilable differences between political parties that is causing a division, massive division. It reminds me almost, you know, of stuff like when a divorce, you know, you get husband and wife and they get, it'll always come down to one little issue. It'll go on for ages, you know, uh, uh, them bickering and fighting about this and that and everything else, and they just can't get along. And they're slowly falling out with each other o over a period of time. You can just see it coming. And then finally, it'll come down to the toaster and the burnt toast or something like that. Some little issue. But it's a signal of something much deeper and bigger. And that's what's happening right now with the border issue. It's actually a symptom of something much, much, much larger. And so, if it settles itself, and it just well might, just wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming. Something bigger is probably coming. Because I, I just don't see how... And, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg to what's going on in the world. You know... Over in Germany and stuff, they're talking about World War Three. Over in over in the eastern countries, like uh, like the Swarovski Gap, and Ukraine, and Romania, and, and all these different countries are preparing for World War Three at the same time. And what about our banking system in the United States? I, from what I hear, they're not going to continue with the bank term funding program. Well, that can only mean one thing. Maybe they're planning on dropping rates. Because because of the bank term funding program. Otherwise, they're going to have a whole bunch of banks collapse. The only thing supporting our banks now is the bank term funding program. They they can't make cash. You you guys, if if people were to go in right now and want to get their money, everybody, like one person goes in, yeah, they got that covered. But, you know, if a whole bunch of people decide to go in, it can happen so fast now. It's all on people's phones. They can they can just poop, 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 push a couple buttons on their phone, and they've withdrawn all their money out of the account. And you can get a bank run that happens that way. In an almost instantaneous sort of a thing. Oh, uh, oh, the, the world right now is an absolute powder keg. I, I couldn't begin to start to cover all of the issues that's coming at us. And so, uh, just just almost wait for it. I mean, I look, look, guys. I was on here about maybe three years ago. I did a show, The Titanic is Sinking. Taking on water, and I was comparing the Titanic to this system that's out here right now. And that was a long time ago, back when things were pretty good. It was quite a while ago. Might have been four years ago. 
it was quite a while ago anyway and I said she's going down this is it I could see the turn I could see her starting to sink now she's starting to list she's just starting to list and you know what happens when you got a really big ship like the Titanic and it's sinking nobody knows it's sinking they can't figure it out you know, except maybe the guys down in the engine room that's filling the engine room's filling with water. They know. They come up on deck, but up on deck everything looks fine. But when the ship starts to list, that's when everybody realizes suddenly. And this is the thing what we're at right now. They have to try to keep people calm because the ship is gonna start to list soon. And then that's when the people might start everybody might start to panic at that point. Like they're, they wake up suddenly, all of them, in a mass event of a wake-up event, because it's, then it's in their face, and then they can realize it. And when they see it, it, may, it might be too late for you to prep at that point. You know, we're getting awful close to that. That's what's happening now. The ship is starting to list. Look at this. The Chinese Navy have developed a, a dream bullet. And from what I'm reading about it is, this thing can go around corners. It travels a mile and a half each second. That's how fast the bullet's traveling. It's not really a bullet. It's, it's like a giant bullet. Enormous bullet. It's a bullet the size it can sink a ship. And I guess what, it, what, it, what they can do with it is they can aim it at the side of a ship, you know, down below the water line, and the bullet goes in that makes a big enough hole that the ship sinks. And they can take this thing around corners. It's, it's, it's some sort of a, it's a dream bullet. What they call a dream bullet. Satellite controlled dream bullet. Uh, but right up till now, one of the problems that they're having with it, it's only accurate up to 45 feet. So they can't, they can't maybe shoot it at, 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 at somebody, you know, because it's too, it's 45 foot target is the smallest target that they can hit with the thing. It's not that accurate yet. But it can go around corners and stuff. So it, it can evade any way you can try to stop it. Because it, it's much smaller than a missile. Missiles are hard enough to hit. You know, like with the Patriot missile system. And they'll use ground-based surface to air. And they will br bring down missiles. But missiles pretty big. 20, 30 feet long. You know. This thing's small. Much smaller. Much, much, much smaller. Travel them faster. And much, much harder to hit, to stop it. And that's why I guess they call it a dream bullet. GPS-guided bullet. Now, the, 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 the NATO countries are preparing, they're rehearsing for their attack on Europe. For Russia's attack on Europe, I should say. You know, 90,000 troops from 31 member states are taking part. Uh, and they're going to get, they're getting ready to defend Europe from an invasion. And there's a picture of them all getting their, doing their thing, preparing. Prepare, Ru Russian media has denounced the planned drills as essentially a rehearsal of war against the Russian state. The Russians think, hey, you know what? They're preparing to attack us. You know, that's the way the Russians see it. And the Russians say, well, we've got to get in there first. You know, and this is just a lead in to, to the to the big main event that's coming up. You know, guys, I've been thinking about stuff like this. Uh, if really, if the SH, you know, hits the fan and it's really, really bad, what's the best way to survive? Well, it all depends on where you're at. There's going to be a lot to do with it. If you're in a place that has a high population density, it depends on how the people respond. Uh, are they going to be, are they going to continue to be law-abiding citizens in some sort of a disaster where the power is out for, say, multiple weeks or months? Or will your area devolve into chaos? Now, you got to take your particular area into mind. Think about it for a minute. Say to yourself, what sort of uh, people live in this area? You know, what are they like? What is, uh, 
And there are other communities in my area where the people might cause a lot of trouble and how law-abiding are they going to be in a crisis situation. you got to take that into consideration, whether your area is a danger area or not. Density of population, generally most times a higher population density is worse. Uh, how many houses are, uh, uh, are, are like, how dense is the population right in your area? You know, uh, take that into consideration. I mean, uh, what I'm trying to say is, if you got a house and your nearest neighbor is like, if you can yell your head off and he can't hear you, that's good. If you could uh, make a really loud noise, like your car backfires, I was going to say something else. But if your car backfires and nobody can hear you for miles, that's even better. You know? Uh, but if you're stacked on top of one another, like in an apartment building in some suburb someplace in some big city, and it's it's rowdy in the best of times, and rowdy, I mean, you know, they're, they're up all night and they're, you can see the police come about twice a week to your place, you know? That's not a good place to be when this thing hits. If there's already lawlessness in your community right now in good times, that's not a good place to be. And place to be is going to mean a lot to it. I got thinking, I was sitting there thinking last night, and I said the best way to actually survive this thing is to be in a remote location where there's nobody, where you could... <sighs> Make uh, any noise you wanted. The nearest you, you could walk 50 miles to reach the first house. That's the place to be when this thing hits, you know. And I also got thinking about something. Well, what about food? I discovered something this week, you know. Or I should say in the last two weeks or so. I started baking bread. And I did it kind of just for fun. But man, I'm telling you, the bread you bake for yourself... It don't taste anything like the bread you buy in the store. What are they putting in the bread you buy in the store? It doesn't taste good. I didn't know bread tasted that good. It's the bread you bake for yourself. It's yummy. It's good, right? So I bought a bag of all-purpose flour. like a, I think it was a five-pound bag. And for about the last two or three weeks, I've been baking almost every day with it. You know, a loaf about every single day. Man, so I looked up on the internet and I said, well, how many loaves do you get out of a pound of flour? I said, three and a half loaves. Out of one pound of flour, you get three and a half loaves. Now think about this as a supplement for your regular food supply. So you got your regular food supply. You got your canned beans, you got your canned spam, you got all this kind of stuff you put away, freeze-dried this, freeze-dried that, Right? Now, think if you had a loaf of bread every day to add to that. Then you wouldn't go through your regular food half as fast. It would last twice as long, maybe even three times as long. Have a couple slices of bread with your meal each meal. Think about this for a minute. But that wouldn't take very much flour. So if you get three and a half loaves, the loaf's big, you know, there's a lot of slices in the loaf. If you get three and a half loaves per pound... Think if you put 100 pounds of flour away, right? That would be 350 loaves. 100 pounds of flour would be 350 loaves. Now that's a loaf a day for a year, every single day. Well, if you only used a half a loaf a day, that 100 pounds of flour would last you two whole years, and it would probably extend your food supply into the future double as long as it would normally last. It's not real expensive. So I think adding that, and there's another thing I was thinking about, you know, adding to the prep supply, is lard. Good old-fashioned lard. Buy a bucket of lard, you know, and don't just buy one bucket. Get 100 pounds of lard put away. You're going to need that. Not just you take your, your you know, and you're cooking your bread, do you uh, you you got to rub some on the pan, some lard on the pan, to keep your bread from sticking. 
you know. But I'm going to tell you guys, when you get hungry enough and you bake a fresh loaf of hot bread, and you can't keep butter very long because it's not refrigerated, you know. You're not going to have the convenience of a refrigerator. But you can spread some lard on that. That's going to, on a hot bread. Now, that might not sound that great, you know. But I'm going to tell you what, and combine that with a little bit of something like molasses or honey. Man, that goes good with your dinner, I'll tell you. It somehow, somehow, I don't know what there is about it, but bread, if you got a couple slices of bread with your meal, somehow it makes you feel like you've really ate something. Rather than, you know, if you just got a can of beans to eat, you know. Just think about it for a minute. If all you got is a can of beans to eat, and you got to share your beans with four different people, so you only get this little thing of beans. It's just just a half a cup of beans. That's all you're going to get, and that's for the whole day. Wouldn't it be nice to have two slices of bread with it? Hot bread out of the oven? To make it go a lot further? I'm just saying, guys. And, oh, one more thing. When you're prepping, put away lots of vitamin C tablets away for yourself. Because you don't want to get scurvy and all this. How, how are you going to... You might go six months without being able to get any fresh fruit and vegetables and stuff to keep you from getting scurvy. Now, I'm thinking to myself, hey, you know what? You can get vitamin C out of these pine trees, out of the... Car, the what do they call carnivorous? The trees, you know, the evergreen type trees. There's quite a few of them out there. Different ones, you know. But they have vitamin C in them. And so I'm studying up on it right now, learning what parts of the pine tree you can eat. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is going to get rough, guys. This is not going to go away. This is leading to something that you don't want to know where it's leading. You don't want to know at this point in time. EU, in the EU, the farmers are blocking all the cities off. So you got this big convoy in the United States. Let me see if we can see a picture of the... Of the... Uh, of, of the EU, of their of their big massive tractor rally they got going on. Oh, here's one right here for you. Remember yesterday or the day before I was talking about them spraying poop or manure? Well, here you go. Spraying away all over the government buildings in France. You know, that's what's happening right now. And the oil, oil's jumped 1% already, just on, oh, 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 got to say, I forgot to mention it in my show so far, three U.S. servicemen have been killed, and eight more critically injured. And so, my heart goes out to the families, and we're going to get into talking about that in a second or two here. Uh, so this is a tragic situation that's happened. It's apt, to, it's apt to escalate the war scenario. So oil has jumped one percent after the Houthis attack. Houthis are at it again. They've attacked, uh, attacked the fuel tanker in the Red Sea, and that's jumped oil one percent. Do you think oil's jumping now? You just wait till if the war starts between Iran, you know, and stuff. They're going to cut off the Strait of Hormuz. They'll block that sucker right off. And oil will jump by 50%. 80%. What does that do to inflation? Well, you don't even want to talk about it. Now, look at this. Trump could owe more than $400 million after court rulings this week. Now, I guess that's all he's got in cash. I mean, you know, he's got other stuff like hotels and stuff. But, I mean, you know, his cash in the bank. They probably, they probably know. Anyway, they're, they're, they're tooth and nail. Tooth and nail. This is just tooth and nail. They're coming after him, tooth and nail. $400 million. Holy moly, well, how do they figure that? Uh, it's like the, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> some old show I used to watch years ago. You know, he'd say, how do you figure that? <laughs> Guy would say, you know, how do you figure that? <laughs> uh, it says here, Trump has only an estimated $426 million in cash and liquid assets. 
So I guess that's the whole lump. Because 400 million ruling. How you figure that? Iran launches three satellites into, into, into orbit as part of Western criticized program as tensions rise. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. If they can launch three satellites into space, Iran, and they've wanted nuclear weapons for a while now, and they've been enriching uranium for ages, and if they can launch three satellites into space, what about nuclear? That's just all I'm saying. I've been hearing for years now, Iran's developing a nuclear weapon. Iran's developed, and Iran doesn't say anything. Heard this morning they're saying they could have maybe enough, they could enrich enough uranium for 12 nuclear weapons. The possibilities there. Iran ain't saying anything. You know, I'm going to tell you, it's it's not it's not the dog that's barking. That's the dog you've got to be careful of that's going to bite you. And Iran has denied involvement in drone strikes. As Biden said, the U.S. must respond. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Sunday that the U.S. will respond to an overnight drone strike in northern, northwestern Georgia. Now, that's, uh, that's the drone strike that killed the three servicemen I was talking about a minute ago, you know, and put eight others in critical condition. And there's a bunch of others, like 30 of them or something like that, that have, like, brain injuries and stuff like that, I guess from the repercussion of the bang. You know, it messes up your brains. You know, it's it's what they call a, uh, uh, what's the name they got for that? You know, when a bomb goes off, it has a uh, a repercussion that comes off of it, a uh, inside the blast zone, you know. I have a little brain fart on what that's called. But anyway, so that's what's happening with that. That's not a good situation. You can expect something to probably happen very soon from all of this. Now moving on to the silver price today. We've been touching $30, I mean $22.96. We've been touching $23 several times and then backing away from it a little bit. Uh, it's $22.96 right now for silver per ounce. I'm taking a look at cryptocurrency today. Bitcoin is at 42,585. And Ethereum's at 2271. And XRP is at 52.6 cents. The Dow Jones today, she's down by two points, which is almost nothing. At 38,106. So I guess the Dow Jones is saying, hey, you know, what are we going to do here? Are we going to go up or are we going to go down? I'm going to have to wait and see. But you know, the biggest thing for this market right now is the interest rates. If they, What are they going to do with interest rates after this majorly fast tightening cycle? Taking a look at the crude oil today is at 77.06. It's down 95 cents on the day so far. Bonds and rates, we're looking at fallen yields today. Uh, we're looking at a 10-year at 3.89. And so the 10 years dropped quite a little bit. It's back down below 4%. And the 30-year is at 4.52. And uh, it's up. It's down 6.1 basis points on the day so far. Going to be a good little gap between the 30 and the 10-year. They were awful close there for a while. Oh, There's quite a little gap coming. Now the dollar's going up today at 103.75. A little bit off of my uh, normal programming yesterday. I did a show about diet. That particular diet I put on there works for me. I, When I was younger I always had trouble with my weight. I was up and down, up and down like a yo-yo. 
Gain 20 pounds, lose 20 pounds. Gain 20 pounds. You guys all know that. These diets you go on, you diet, and you gain it all back again. I was one of those yo-yo dieters. <laughs> up and down, up and down, up and down. But my weight's been very stable. And I just follow my that advice I gave you guys yesterday, and it really works for me. It allows me to eat whatever I want. Because I don't like having to be able to say, hey, you know what, I can't have that. Or I can't, oh, they're, hell, they're all having cheesecake. Oh, I can't have that today. I'm on a diet. I don't like that. Anyway, listen, guys, thank you very much for listening to my show. You guys rock. Really appreciate my audience out there. Remember, push, push that like button, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.